Here's the authentic and bootleg ultimate Green Goblin BAF wave. I'm going to share with you how to spot the bootleg version just by looking at pictures of them in case you're buying them from a secondary market. This wave is the very first of the Infinite series from way back in early 2014. The bootleg version started appearing a little bit later in the year. Anyways, the quality of the bootleg figures from this wave is not really that great, especially for one or two of the figures in this wave. I guess bootleg Marvel Legends figures did kind of improve slightly over the years, but occasionally there are still some terrible ones being produced. You can check out my Marvel Legends bootleg comparison playlist after watching this video. There's plenty of bootlegs that I managed to get my hands on and compare with the original. I think this wave is also kind of unique as it is the only one that has kind of two different waves or variants I guess. First wave being the two Spidey figures Electro and Black Cat, Carnage and Beetle. And the next wave is the same two Spideys and Electro but with Spider Girl, Toxin and Boomerang. If I'm not mistaken they were released at different timing with the Carnage, Beetle and Black Cat wave released first then Toxin, Boomerang and Spider Girl a bit later. Those who were already collecting at that time can you share it in the comments below how it was last time? Because if I'm not mistaken, I'm right that the Carnage set came out first and then the Toxin and the other two variants or second wave. Now, let's start with the Superior Spidey. In case you're wondering why this Superior Spidey is like this, honestly, I can't remember myself. I was looking through my folder figures and I actually found this one somewhere deep within them. And yeah, it's missing the right hand and also the whole of the left arm. So I don't even remember what I did with this figure or maybe I got this in a set of orders and it was already like this. Yeah, but anyways, this is bootleg. First off, even on the original, the web lines is meant to be kind of messy on the costume. This is how the superior Spidey was drawn even in the comics. The web lines are really kind of a mess. If you compare it with the original costume, the web lines are all neatly done. But even though the web lines are supposed to be messy, on the bootleg version, it's really terrible. Look at that. The web lines don't even connect nicely to each other. You can see the gaps where the web line don't connect. And look at that. It's really, really bad. Look at the chest area and compare it with the authentic. Although it is kind of messy, at the very least, the lines are still kind of neat and straight. Compared to the bootleg version, where you see a few of the lines don't really meet up and connect with the other web lines. Look at the top. So it's quite obvious the bootleg has really inferior web line. Lol. The next thing to spot is the elbow. On the original, the elbow has a slight gap and there's a letter R embossed between them. For the bootleg version, you can see there is barely any gap at all. On the other side, for the original, there is also a slight gap and also an arrow embossed. Here's a bit of light. There you can see there is an arrow embossed at the elbow area. But for the bootleg version, I am very sure that the other side will also be something like this with almost no gap. So that is one obvious way to spot the bootleg of the superior Spidey. Look at the missing web lines at the side. The original does not have that problem. You can also see the lack of black paintwork at the spine of the KO. The original also have a bit of red along the spine at the spider logo but it isn't that bad. Nowhere as bad as the bootleg version. So, yep, that's how you differentiate the superior spidey bootleg, the gap at the arms and also the really terrible web line paintwork. Next up, Spidey. If you have the figure in hand, you can really see how good the original one is. It's really red and blue. The colors are really vibrant but if you were to look at the bootleg version and you have it in hand, it's really terrible. You can see the red and the blue is really dull and the paintwork definitely not great. You can see that the black on the spider logo is barely there compared to the original. Same goes at the back. The paintwork is a bit dull but at least it doesn't look as bad on the bootleg version. But one thing to note is that for the original, the figure has white eyes. For the bootleg, the eyes are kind of silvery. And the one that I got doesn't come with the alternate hands as well. It doesn't have the web shooting hands, only the fist. You can see the crotch area, the plastic quality isn't that great compared to the original. 
and the gap at the crotch area is also kind of worse. Although the original one is already quite bad, the gap is really quite big. <laughs> and to top it off, mine came with two right foot. So to spot the original Amazing Spider-Man, white eyes for the original, silver eyes for the bootleg. And the paintwork on the original is better, vibrant red and blue, and the spider is painted well. Dull red and blue, and the spider logo is not painted well. Next up, Beetle. Lol, yeah, the leg is actually broken. The figure was just like sitting on this broken leg. If you guys don't know, this leg is really fragile. There's a version of Ultron on this body mold, and the thigh swivel has this same problem where it breaks really easily. So how do we spot the bootleg version for this? Because at a glance, it really looks the same. One way is to look at the abs. The original version has the abs kind of further apart compared to the bootleg where the lines of the abs are closer to each other. I think the difference in the abs is quite obvious. And also for the original, if you look carefully, oops, you can see a slight notch over here at the side of the abs. But for the bootleg version, there isn't any notch. A slight notch on the original, no notch on the bootleg. The paintwork on the wings are also different. For the original, the paintwork is really good and smooth, but on the bootleg, you can see it's kind of like pixelated and isn't as smooth as the original. And it has more yellow compared to the original which has more green. So again, to tell them apart, the original has the notch at the abs area, the bootleg does not have the notch at the side of the abs area. And also the original has the lines of the abs further apart compared to the lines of the abs of the bootleg which is closer together. As well as the color of the wings. Smooth and more green on the original. Yellow and kind of pixelated on the bootleg. Next, Carnage. For Carnage, it's quite simple to spot the bootleg. Again, at a glance, these two are really similar. But one obvious difference is that the original has white eyes, the bootleg has silver eyes. And also for the original, the mouth does not open as wide as the bootleg version. The bootleg has the mouth open wider. And also, the tendrils. For the original, you can see that it kind of have two different branches of tendrils. But for the bootleg version, it's actually connected. You see that line over there? That one is not present in the original. So that's another difference. So again, to spot the bootleg carnage, silver eyes on the bootleg, white eyes on the original, the mouth on the bootleg opens wider, and also the difference in the tendril that I explained earlier. This piece of plastic that connects the two tendrils. Next up, black cat. This is the one that is the most easiest to spot the bootleg, which is, you need to look at the cleavage. For the original, there is a gap right above the ring, but for the bootleg, there isn't that gap of the white furry part. The eyes are also different. I feel that the eyes of the original are painted better with the thicker eyeliner compared to the bootleg version, which is kind of sleepy looking. Next, Electro. Now, this is a tough one. On picture, it's really quite difficult to tell them apart. What you can look out for, however, is at the side. For the original, you can see the blue paintwork does not go on the bicep area, unlike the bootleg which has the blue on the bicep area. And also for the bootleg, you can see this kind of um, brownish part at the side of the torso, which is very obvious compared to the original one, which only has a little bit of that brownish paintwork for you to differentiate between the original and the bootleg. The original Electro also clicks when the app crunch bends forward and back. There's no sound for the bootleg version and also that it doesn't even stay in place. It kind of bounces right back to upright position. And last but not least, the ultimate Green Goblin BAF itself. Again, this is one which is very difficult to tell apart in pictures. But one obvious way to tell them apart if you are able to see the back of the figure is actually this part over here. Green for the original on the inner side of the ripped pants, blue for the bootleg. 
So this is one sure and obvious way to check whether this is the original or the bootleg Ultimate Green Goblin BAF. And also the paintwork of the spikes on the original is really great. You can see the white spikes at the bottom of the chin and also the ones at the shoulder. You can see the white really painted all the way to the arms. Same as the other side. But for the bootleg version, look at that. The paintwork of the chin is really terrible. And as for the flames, the original is more translucent compared to the bootleg version which is less translucent. And I think it can be seen for the bullet version, the flame effect has more orange at the bottom of it at this part compared to the original which has the darker orange at this top part instead. Same goes for the flame at the back. The bootleg is more orange than the original and you can see that the original is more translucent as well. So again, the easiest way to spot the bootleg Ultimate Green Goblin BAF is by the back of the knees. Blue for the bootleg version, green for the original. In terms of quality, the original is definitely better. Some of the joints on the bootleg are really not that great. You can see the loose leg on the bootleg BAF Green Goblin. Loose legs as well on the beetle. The joints on the black cat is okay. Electro's app crunch can't even stay in place. Bootleg carnage is quite okay. The head is slightly loose though, but not that bad. Superior Spidey has decent joint, but yeah, the paintwork is really, really terrible. And the worst of the lot is this Spidey. The paintwork is really bad. The quality of the plastic is really bad and the joints are also terrible. Look at how loose the leg is. Just overall a really, really bad bootleg for this one. I hope this video helps you to spot between the original and the bootleg if you only have pictures to compare them online if you're buying them secondhand in the secondary market. I've done individual comparisons for each of these figures except for the superior Spider-Man. So you can check that out as well. If you want to know more details between the differences between the bootleg and the original of each of these figure. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more comparison and also review of Marvel Legend figures.